Is there anybody out there? It's happened. Approximate location of impact, the North Atlantic. As I speak to you right now, it's making its way towards our fair nation. We have 12 hours, people. We're already dead. It's gonna hurt. And I don't wanna feel it. I don't wanna feel a thing. I hope you're looking after yourselves out there and each other. These are things we got to hold on to. Nobody Congratulations on the film. Um, I have to let you know that I am actually from Perth originally, oh. so it was fantastic to see it up on the big screen, and sadly it's, it's very, very rare. Um, I have to say, watching the film, I had kind of grown up, you know, Perth is the most isolated capital city in the world, and it is pretty much the end of the earth. Um, growing up, I did kind of find a bit of a sense of com comfort that if there was, you know, some sort of nuclear war or anything, we probably would be the last to go okay. um, watching it. Um, I have to say, you know, I am a glass half full kind of girl, but having seen it play out on screen, I'm not so comforted by that, I think. <laughs> uh, Zach, when you wrote the film, um, was it always Perth that you had in mind? Absolutely. Yep. I mean, I was born and bred in Perth. I still reside there as we yes. speak. Um, so um, oh, it's it's just exciting, as you said, to, <laughs> to bring bring mm. Perth to the big screen in a way that people that live there would have never seen it before. You know, New York, Absolutely. these places, Tokyo, they've been destroyed oh, really? many times <laughs> in all of these ends of the world. Why from... would you want to live in New York at these places? <laughs> but no one's ever quite seen what Perth was doing in those movies. Well, this is that movie. Yes, <laughs> waiting it out while well, having a party, it seems, at one point. Um, I have to say, who let you use the house for that end of the world party? Because I imagine that was not a set. <laughs> it was not a set. It was all real world locations. Um, uh, an, an amazing woman. Amazing woman. An amazing woman yeah. who I met through a friend. And um, she was just, again, every, Perth was, the Perth community mm. was just so excited about helping this film yeah. get up. And it was just little little things like that that, that, that then became big things because the location was just perfect. It yes. was exactly what I had written in my mind. And when I, when I saw it, I yeah. just knew that what have we got to do to get this place? And the fact that um, this woman was so uh, accommodating, it was mm. uh, just just amazing. Just just yeah. those little bits of synergy that happened all the way along the film yeah. um, with that support, it, it really got the film over the line. Yeah, brilliant. And when you were kind of brainstorming the big party scene, were you just kind of thinking of all of society's excesses that mm. you know, combined into one? Well, the brief from day one <laughs> in the script was the the world's worst Australia Day party. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, this is Perth, does, Perth does that pretty they, well. We I do think. do them. Uh, <laughs> we've, 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 we've all been at a few of them. And uh, this was a Australia Day party on steroids. And um, it was just a lot of fun to really uh, play with that idea and that sort of world that we've all experienced. Yes. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was fun. Had you spent much time in Perth before this? Yes, I'd experienced yeah. hedonism before. <laughs> Um, well, that's good. Yeah, I love, I love West Isles. Um, you know, I've surfed all the way down to Margaret River and oh, up yeah, to Exmouth, and yeah. um, you know, been very, uh, very happily, you know, spending days in summer there yeah. um, in Coslo. So it was great for me to be back mm. in the cot, you know, in between the marine, you know, the ABH and the cot. And, <laughs> You know, uh, just be able to yeah. go for a swim. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's all life research. Um, but just yeah, it was just a great place to film. Mm. I mean, the weather obviously was wasn't in the later part of the year when it's extremely bit yeah. too hot. Yeah. Mm. But it was a great time of year to film in October, November. Mm. Um, you know, Lancelin to yeah. you know down in Raleigh Stone and Malaga. And kind of got around, you know, Perth. So yeah. it was really cool, really really cool, and that helps sell. It sold what we needed to sell, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And now we don't know much about your character, Nathan, kind of going in, you know, what he does for a living, where he grew up, that sort of thing, but I guess at this point in time, it doesn't really matter. It's all kind of stripped away. Um, but as an actor, how do you approach a character like that? Um, yeah, well, it was always just the, the kind of like, okay, let's create a journal for this guy and mm. a story, a backstory that will really play, has a lot of relevance for me mm. because it informs my choices, but, and it'll, but we needed to create a really strong, you know, sense of life mm. of all the characters in yeah. the world of the, the dysfunctional relationship between him and his mother. Mm. Where's the father? Like yeah. all these questions that I would just throw back at Zach. So yeah. it was Zach's world essentially mm. created, and you know he just allowed us to come in as players and then take on the roles and you know um, make him walk and and you know mm. talk his language. Uh, so 
any questions we had, it came kind of got flushed out during the rehearsal process. Mm-hmm. It got flushed out leading up to filming because you know we would just you know shoot shoot it all out on the. I was like, shoot the I don't want to say that. We would just converse <laughs> on Skype, <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it was all kind of like then created yeah. from that. So yeah. it allowed it authenticity. It allowed it the, like the characters mm. to be so believable. Like yeah. so, James worked in the mines, and then yeah. he was in a band that never took off, and uh, you know he had yeah, all these yeah, dreams, yeah. and now he's just become the weekend warrior. Yeah. He was that party. The, yeah. the party you see James go to mm. represents what James once was. Yeah, and only through this unlikely coupling of you know him and eleven year old girl. Mm. The, the girlfriend who's now pregnant, you know, like, his world's blown up yeah. and literally the world is doing that. Mm. So metaphorically, it says a lot of, like, where the characters are going and what choices we have to make. And yeah. fundamentally, this film offers a lot of questions and not so many answers mm. about how to deal with this and how does one cope that shows how many people can deal <laughs> and how many people do cope and fight or flight, you yeah. know? It's like you said, mm. is the glass half full or mm. half empty? Yeah. It's all... A, singular perspective yeah. so that's what we're stoked on because audiences are getting that yeah and they're walking away talking about it and feeling it and yeah. you know we just I, I know that i just hope that someone's calling me a mum just to say i love you yeah. you know because yeah, yeah, you just yeah. never know <laughs> um I'm so sure yeah we're pretty chuffed that we made a movie that speaks to people you know absolutely and i mean the film hinges so much on your relationship with rose you know the 11 year old was that a new dynamic for you working with someone so young mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An eleven-year-old is like, uh, it's, it's. I mean, every age is, has its landmark, and yeah. but I find like that film, the subject matter, with um, the language, the the you know, the adult themes. Mm. Um, we were all very aware of this, this girl's innocence and this girl's spin on the world, and you know, I was shattered when I found out Santa Claus wasn't real. <laughs> you know, and I still say, <laughs> hey. You know, that was so disappointing. <laughs> you don't know, but um, I'd, but so with that, we were all we took on the onus. We all kind of got to have a little bit more of a um, thoughtful process about how we mm. spoke around each other, and the swear jar was present <laughs> yeah, because of Angari. So having those kind of cool, childlike kind of keeps you on your toes. Keeps you on your yeah. toes, and, yeah, and it brings that in a whole different energy mm. because you're seeing that those bright eyes every day and how yeah. excited she is to be on set, and it's yeah. like. I want that feeling every day again too, you know? <laughs> so she was just, mm. she raised the bar for everyone, I mm. think. It, she really did. Yeah. Because she's and such a, you know, you see she's such a talented little actress already. Absolutely, such a good find, which I think she found her in the short mm. film initially. Yeah. But the chemistry that you guys had was was incredible. Um, but like you said, I, I loved in the film just the kind of little moments, like when um, your character James said that she could swim, go swimming in her clothes, even though she didn't have her bathers on, and she just got so excited. Like, yeah. oh, it's <laughs> yeah. the best news ever if yeah. the world's about to end. Yeah, it was, it was always those lovely moments <laughs> yeah, yeah. too, where we found those yeah. moments to breathe and just yeah. see the... Just, this is really cute and weird and, yeah you know um and to get the audience just to forget that yeah. the world's about to end yeah you know and just get it because it's such a microscopic view yeah. of just there's one little experience and yeah. uh, you know so many different characters the film could just take any road yeah. and follow down any other character and it's a whole different story mm. absolutely um yeah Oh, when the, yeah, I think the axe-wielding guy was chasing your car, and then you're like, just take the car. And he's like, I'm in no condition to drive. Drive? Yeah, yeah. So you (laughs) get the humor, yeah. (laughs) We really wanted that. No, it was brilliant. And, and, like, this is your first feature film. You've you've gone to Cannes already. That was Um, so cool. Amazing. It was incredible. (laughs) So, I mean, where do you go from here? Are you looking at another genre film, or was it just kind of... Sequel, definitely. Sequel, Sequel, yeah. yeah. Right. End of the world, too. (laughs) Um, Oh, you know, I'm... Keep my keep my options open. Um, I'd love to make films in this genre some more, or yeah. work outside this genre. I'm yeah. sort of you know open. Yeah, I'm open to all all things. I just want to keep telling good stories yeah. about the human condition. Yeah. So it's definitely a good place. And I know in Australia it is hard to get funding for films, and I'm sure you're both very aware. Mm. I was talking to Miranda Otto last week, and she was saying that one of the drawbacks she thinks is that. Um, we are an English-speaking country, and so it is just really easy to import films from America. Whereas you look at France, which has a very, you know, they're putting out a lot of movies, and it's quite protected because of the industry. Um, what are your thoughts, I guess, on the Australian industry and battling that? Well, yeah, I mean, mm. all I know is that this movie wouldn't exist without the the Australian film governing agency, Screen yeah. West and Screen Australia. Like yeah. they 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 were the studio system that made this film happen, and and without them giving me the right development and support. This, this film would never have happened, mm. um, so it would be a shame to to ever lose that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's finally here where you can show everyone, which is, must be very, very exciting. And yeah. all the best. I think it's going to be very, very good. 
thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. She is. She is. That's great. Are you trying to impress? Running around trying to help this girl? Just trying to help her, Mum. You better go. How come you're not with her? I've messed a lot of things up, Grace. I still try. I just hope you're all keeping safe out there. You're surrounded by your families. Hold on. Hold on, Rose. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs>